I am the Craft Dad. Welcome back everyone. So I finally started the build on my Butterfly Demon Slayer Sword. And uh, what you see here is of course I'm starting off with the template um, the, uh, that I made in the uh, blender and then transferred to the Pepecura and then printed off and uh, started cutting out. And so uh, since just watching me cut paper can be uh, boring, I went ahead and sped it up uh, so, um, <clears throat> so it doesn't take very long. Uh, I could have just done a cutscene, you know, like some people do the, hey, here's the paper, the template, cutscene next, and it's all cut out. Yeah, but, you know, some people like seeing how I do it, and if you don't, uh, well then just skip ahead to the next part of the video. As you can see here, I'm making sure, you know, take my time in the measure. And uh, as you're looking at uh, any template that you do build, whether you print it out or if you uh, hand draw it yourself, you know, it, it's just a starting point. It's a template. It's something to start with. Um, you may end up <coughs> going with something else. You may <coughs> end up doing something else. Sorry about that. Um, you know, so in here, uh, the template uh, that I have, you know, I wanted to make sure I, I lined them up correctly uh, before I um, started cutting out the big pieces and stuff. Uh, this way, um, it makes it, uh, it just makes it easier. And then the, uh, <clears throat> the autofocus on the camera was a little out there. But here I, you know, cut out, start cutting out some of the other pieces just so uh, it's easier to work with. Um, you know, but as you're cutting out, this is, uh, this is where having a sharp knife, exacto knife or a blade is handy. Um, I actually have a um, sharpening tool so that I can uh, sharpen this blade over and over again. Uh, that's one of the things that some people tend not to do, is, is they don't keep the, uh, their, their cutting tools sharp, and so it gets harder and harder to actually cut uh, the paper. And as you can see here, <coughs> even with the as sharp as, because uh, this, this one was brand new, I had just bought it, even with this one being so brand new and stuff, it still did not cut through the paper. and. Uh, in some places and stuff and so you know you you got to just carefully go back over the line uh, or the scoring that you had just made now when you're uh, piecing something together whether you you make a template out of tape or something else you know sometimes it doesn't all fit uh, nicely together and stuff and sometimes you you end up cutting too much you know and well because this is just a template you can easily add material back it's when you get to foam that you have to be careful because adding uh, foam back to a uh, project is not easy. Uh, you can do it uh, depending on where it's at. Uh, it could end up looking, um, you know, looking bad or being a mess that you would end up having to then try to hide the line of stuff. And uh, one thing with this cutting board that, that you just saw there, uh, the tape actually stuck really good to it. Uh, so I've got to be careful when using tape on that cutting board because it's going to end up sticking to this uh, self-healing surface. Do you need a cutting board? No, if you've got a glass uh, surface, uh, you can cut on that. Uh, or if you've got, you know, granite or some other surface, you can cut on it. Uh, in this uh, scene here, I still haven't uh, got the glass surface, but I eventually will. Because I, as I was doing this one, I realized <laughs> I should have brought one of the, uh, the glass tabletops that I have. Uh, but you can find a tabletop in your local area. They're, they're not very expensive. Um, I found some that were only about $10, uh, but the, uh, the seller never got back to me, so they lost out on a deal. And I just kept looking around and uh, found someone who was about an hour uh, drive away from where, I'm, where I am at and uh, got a really nice, real perfect size, nice and thick, um, tempered glass tabletop uh, that I could use for my project. Now, see here, I've combined the, uh, the handle with the blade. Uh, partly because as I do this, if I make it two completely separate pieces, uh, the blade and the handle, then uh, it, it might not, it, it could end up being really weak where you join it. Alright, so I'm doing a different angle here, just trying to give you guys different angles of it. 
But this is the foam I'm planning to use, and I can. It's a nice long roll. It's pretty thick. Um, it should work pretty good. Uh, this other long piece here, this would actually be the spine of the blade, and you can see it's just thick enough. Um, definitely don't think I can do. I should do two of these because then that makes it would make the blade like that thick, which for a samurai sword, that's not a samurai sword anymore. That becomes way too thick. So definitely need to try to keep it one th one thickness. Um, and then I'm gonna put war blood and other stuff on it so we'll thicken it up. The idea was to have this. So what this is, is this is a um, marking stake. Um, uh, for like the um, roads and stuff and this will add that strength in there but as you can see if I do this then I'm really just adding a very thin sliver of foam and I would have to make the top not rounded if I try to sandwich it this way it's definitely going to be interesting and then but that's also part of why we have warbler. I can do that with warbler. Though I don't think I'll do that on here. This, the way it grabbed that tape, this is definitely not a surface I want to do warbler on. Um, the glass surface, a glass surface, yes. And you know what? I didn't even bring a glass surface. <laughs> no. All right, so this way I'm not having to slouch down to get in the, the picture. Uh, so we have several ideas. I definitely want the rod to be inside the entire sword uh, from the handle all the way through because this will give it the stability. Um, and we can grab one of our the markers and do I want it all the way out at the edge where it starts to bevel? Yeah, we can do that. That's fine. All the way down here to just short because we're going to do a foam cap or butt. So, right there. So that's where I'm going to have to cut. And like I said, this, this is really good. Because see, I can hold it straight up. It's a little flimsy, but once we get the warble and stuff in there, it'll be really stiff for the actual uh, sword. Um, now, the thicknesses of the two... Uh, the foam isn't thicker than the sword, or thicker than the, the rod. It's actually a little bit thinner, but that's fine. It works out. Um, so we can, um, we can just glue that actually right along the edge. Um, and we'll do a thicker piece so that we can then adjust it uh, based on, on what feels, how it feels. So definitely definitely going to be something fun to do. Okay, since we have our template, let's get this. That was just to help hold it. Now this is foam I bought a while ago. I've already used uh, some of it, and then put it like they did, uh, just did a cardboard wrap and tape and, and then some string and it, it held it pretty good. So can I go with this edge and just do several strips? Yes I can, but then the problem is is at the edge here I'm going to have to connect that to uh, more foam and you'll end up with an edge that you could end up having some uh, issues with. Um, plus this edge here isn't as straight as I'd like it. Um, I could go and do the full edge here because I've already got a nice fairly straight edge that the foam came in, but I'd have to unroll a rather large piece. And uh, let's see. Do it this way. 
goes to about there. Well, we I should work with that. All right, so let's move our template because we don't want to cut our templates. Don't want to cut that. Get our knife now to help hold this down. <laughs> I went and bought one of these. This is actually for painting. Um, let's see if I can get a nice straight edge in the foam. So I'm going to hold pressure there. And with this, right, right along. it cuts through just like butter. And I'm starting to slide. That's okay. Get the edge as straight as we can. And yes, that's my alarm because I've got. <laughs> I was like, why did it just drop? Because, okay, okay, yes. Dismiss that, yes. Sorry about that. Oh crap, that just messed me up. Okay, well, we're working on that edge over there. The good thing with foam is it's bendable. You can stretch it, move it. Let's I don't like that bit. This knife is, this exact knife is pretty, pretty sharp, and I'll just give myself some extra space. Just trying to make it so I don't have to work with this big roll. So I'm just gonna slide. I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure. I'm just sliding right down, sliding it right on down. Line up the line as best I can and. Okay, that should be enough for for now. And I'll just stick this over here. Oh, I don't really need that. Alrighty. So. So I've got this foam. It's thick enough for this. And like I said, that pole is going to be part of that. So what I'm going to do is that edge. So how thick is that pole? Well, That's where this comes in. This is a uh, caliper set that I have uh, for measuring uh, just, you know, the actual width of something. And so I can measure it and see that it is. Eight. Eight millimeters or point three point three one inches so eight millimeters. What does that translate to the centimeters for us? Well, it's actually eight centimeters too. That says millimeters. So eight centimeters. Okay. So that works. Because what am I thinking here? So this.
is going to get glued to the edge. Yeah. Let's see if we make it that thick and we do that. Hmm. That's still pretty good. I think it'd work. All right. Let's get the marker again. Now, because because I plan on filling in the foam or covering it with the warbler or wood glue or something else to give it uh, strength and stability so that this isn't flopping around. If she hits it, I'm okay with pinning it down with uh, needles so that I can do an, uh, a good uh, line on it. And I want to give myself a little extra on the edge here just in case, you know, because when I start dremeling and stuff, I want to get that, that nice blade finish there. Uh, and this does compress some, and I may just not even do the edge. I may just compress the warbler to give it the edge uh, if I use warbler. So let's give it, well, I'm gonna mark. Oh, whoops, don't wanna mark yet. <laughs> so I got the pins out. I want to pin it. You can use tape, you can use pins, you can use uh, weights on, the, on your template, whatever you wanna use, as long as it holds the template in place pretty good. Um, so there we go. So now I can use this white marker, which really marks well <laughs> on the dark foam. And remember, with the uh, permanent markers and stuff, you want them stored with the tips down so that the ink is constantly going towards the tip. That way your marker doesn't dry out on you. And because I have it pinned down, I don't have to worry too much about it. Oh, well. Let's switch it around. That way I can't hold it. I don't have to worry about it too much sliding around, but because it is paper. Now, when you're getting ready to cut this out, you do have to consider, do you want to cut so you don't see the white line anymore? Do you want to cut to just the white line? You know, that's, that's going to be your choice. Making sure I do a nice thick white line just like I, I did there. See, and that's good because it comes almost to right here. So that's going to get cut off. It'll be a small piece uh, that then gets put on. And I've got a fairly good edge there. So let's, let's pin it together. A little bit of squishing. And I'll do two pins because I don't want it to really wobble too much. And I'll pin it right there in the middle. And then, well, this one, I'll just pin it right along the, what's going to be the handle blade. Course it, watch out when you're always grabbing for the pay attention to the needles because you reach in and you can end up stabbing yourself which is never fun <laughs> then again it seems it's not a real plot project unless I'm actually bleeding <laughs> uh, don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing and I'll do this right here at the end okay so I'll come back over here Nice white tip, marking that out. You can see this edge already come right to it. There, there. All right, let's mark the back end here, and going across. 
Now I'm going to put in the description uh, um, the uh, the items you can get. I got all of these from Amazon, which is great. So you can find them too. I used to use the black markers until I knew there was white ones, but it was always hard to to get them. And then because of how fast they dried out, I never really wanted to use the white ones. But uh, when you buy these ones, you get uh, six of them. And so the six you just do, uh, you have extra for when you do run out. Alrighty, let's see here. And I've got my video here. Let me see. Alrighty, so next we'll be cutting them out. So we'll just, oops, don't let your pins get loose. Just gotta cut the pin, or get the pins out. Alright, so top of my head's gonna get cut off, but that's okay. Um, you're not watching this to watch me, you're watching this to watch what I'm doing. Well, I mean, you're watching me, but you're not like watching me, me. You're watching the crafting that I'm doing. So we'll move that off to the side. this so now you can freehand cut it but you could end up messing that up this is where I recommend you do with a, a ruler except when you are doing edges that's kind of hard but let's see I'll cut along the white edge I'm gonna cut slightly before that did a little sawing motion there because the foam line I'd already cut uh, was there we go. And we start to get foam scraps. And we got that cut there. So now down here, right on the white line. And I'm just going to And I'm trying to make sure I stay as straight as I can up and down with the blade. If you mess up, that's okay. Also, because the foam will bend and stuff at other places, you know, you gotta make sure you're you're getting it as straight as you can. And it really, I mean it cuts through just like butter when you've got a nice sharp knife. Like we got a section right here that's kind of stuck. Okay, yeah, keep that nice and straight. Alrighty. Alrighty, so let's line that up. That piece, and then we did that. There we go. Sorry if you can't hear me as I talk to myself. I want to get as close to this corner piece as I can. And then I'll just cut it the other way by hand. Because I want to so I just go in there and cut it. There we go. Right, we got a little piece down here. Now that's because of the foam I'm using. This has like a, um, a, a skin to it. The, the inside of the foam is um, bubbly, but it's got like an outer skin that they 
they put on it to fill in all the holes. This is definitely a more porous uh, foam, but this side will give you uh, some really good paint textures. You don't have to worry too much about trying to seal it on this side, but right here in this edge, yeah, this would suck in the foam a lot. There's the first part of our blade, and because I want this to be a nice clean edge, I'm going to just slice it as cleanly as I can. There we go. There we go. Got that. Alrighty. Now for this part. Alright. So you can see, instead of not having to deal with this whole big tail, Let's just slice that right off. See where the white markings all end. Slice across. Because this will end up, because I'm going to want it to be thicker, I'll end up using this as a template on here. Well, I want this part here thicker. This part, not so much. Okay. So, I hope I can do that afterwards. Let's line that up. There we go. It's good enough. Right down into there. I'll keep pressure over here. We're near the edge. So, because of the way this foam is, it's not the uh, typical foam that I use, which is the floor mats. Because uh, those are definitely a lot thicker. Um, we have uh, where it compresses or gives issues. So, let's see if we can... There we go. Got it that time. Sorry about that, the battery died. But that happens. All right, so now we'll switch over. We've got a nice clean edge there. And, oh, sorry, because this was the top edge. Okay, this piece here, I'm just gonna do it by hand. And voila. So I'll do that piece last. Let's get And we may end up having to change this because remember this is going all the way through into the handle. Um, so we'll see. We'll get that close enough. And we'll come in, do by hand. So these two pieces, and I can really just glue that together right now. Um, and you know, let's do that. Why not? I want to be working with the entire piece. And so I've got scrap paper over here. I don't want to glue it onto this. I could put plastic down or something, but we've got some uh, instant cure glue, uh, super glue. Now oh, I've got to cut this off. Push that together and we'll hold that. Now, let's see. This is supposed to be Insta Set. Like it. 
spray that in there. really good on your fingers. I should be wearing gloves and I have my gloves right there. I That's one thing I'm horrible with. I forget to wear my gloves. Oh yeah, that makes the set really good. Okay. Yeah. Gonna go wash my hands. <laughs> Alright, so as I'm looking at the sword and realizing I want this going all the way through to the back end, I don't want the gap here, so I need to shave that off. And, well, I could shave it off or I could add material. And I'll just shave a little bit right here. Make it angle just a slight bit. Won't be noticeable. And I've got my kids on the phone because it's time to do family FaceTime. So once I do this, that's going to be it for today. Uh, and then I'll be back on tomorrow. And we'll, tomorrow we'll actually cut the, uh, the rod down. I already marked the length that I want, um, which is going to be there. And that's going to keep it there. And that'll be perfect. Well, because I'm going to be in there. Yeah, right about there. So, yeah, I'm going to cut through that. And this is like a fiberglass. So, uh, we're going to carefully cut through it and then we make sure we, we vacuum up um, the shavings and stuff because those those don't feel good when you get them in your hands because they're like little tiny needles. Um, I made that mistake the first time I cut one of these. All right. Thank you guys and uh, we'll see you later. All right, folks, that's the end of this video. I hope you like the progress I'm making on the project and that my, uh, the way I'm doing it gives you some ideas for your own projects. Uh, if you like my videos, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so for future videos. Have a great day.